As you undoubtedly know, Tuesday is primary election day. South Florida Congressman Mario Diaz-Balart is a political powerhouse, not really worried about what's going to happen to him on Tuesday. The veteran rep joined the rest of congressional Republicans voting against the Inflation Reduction Act, a new law touted as a game changer for the economy, for climate change, and for medical costs as well. The congressman joins us now via Zoom. Good morning to you. Great to see you. Good to see both of you. Congressman, great, great to see you. Well, let's go through a little bit of the Inflation Reduction Act. You voted against it, even though it's got several provisions, which I'm sure your constituents uh, would like. It does really the most serious attack on climate change in the history of the United States government. It would bring down the cost of prescription drugs for seniors on Medicare. Insulin would be capped at $35 per month. Uh, it would impose 15% tax on large corporations and on people earning more than 400000 a year. And it supposedly would even reduce the deficit. Now, all of that sounds pretty good. Why did you vote against it? Michael, thank you. Uh, a couple of things. You mentioned what the Democrats are saying about the bill, except that it is basically a little bit smaller version of the Green New Deal. Um, you talk about climate and the question has to be asked, how much will it actually re reduce temperature? The answer is zero. What it will do, however, is make uh, energy more expensive, less available in the United States, empowering, by the way, communist China. It raises taxes. You're, right. You're absolutely right. Even um, Mr. Biden, before he was president, said that it was insane, irresponsible to raise taxes during a recession. And yet he's done so. It also, by the way, hires almost 90,000 additional IRS agents, IRS agents to go after the American people, the working class, the middle class. Yeah, well, let me put that if in perspective. I can, yeah, Mari, if I, just, I'm sorry, Michael, I beg your pardon. But let, me, let me jump in and just simply yeah. say, as a citizen, you know, in the last year or two, I don't know, I tried to call the IRS. You right. can never get anybody on the phone. They are underfunded. They have too few people working for them. And too few of these tax returns from wealthy people are being audited. I mean, they needed some help there, didn't they? But let me put it in perspective, a very small percentage, it's less than 5%, I believe, actually goes to help consumers. The rest are actually to go against and to go uh, audit the American people. Again, putting in perspective, if you got uh, the, uh, uh, what, the, the stadium in Hollywood, the Hard Rock Stadium, you filled it up with these new IRS agents, you would still need another 20,000 seats someplace <laughs> because it would fill the stadium in a lot more. This is larger than the entire, it's about twice the size of the members of the United States Coast Guard. Think so about that's, that. Um, so this you're... is to go after the American people, and uh, they're not going to go after the wealthy. They're not going to go after corporations. Look at what the CBO has stated. They're going to go after farmers, middle class Americans, uh, working class Americans. Yeah. Go after them. So, this Congressman, is it is that... highly grotesque and irresponsible. That what what you're saying now. You so you have an issue with the numbers. Um, the I the numbers of IRS hires were actually started, the talks for that were started in the last administration. So this isn't brand new to this to this bill. But there's nothing but in the, the bill increase, that... There was, the increase of almost 90,000 IRS right. so agents there, there's really nothing in the, specifically in this bill. And if you love the IRS and you want to, them to go after you, then you should be... Who doesn't love the IRS? So let me yeah. just, <laughs> let, let me just go back into a little bit of detail there. So I'm talking about the numbers, the increase to the staffing of the IRS was actually being discussed under the last administration. And yes, is for sure it's in this bill. But let me, let me read you what at least uh, University of Pennsylvania, ha Wharton, has kind of crunched all this. Um, the $80 billion over the next decade for IRS enforcement activities is for the hiring and training for IT systems modernization and for taxpayer services, coupled with what also is in the bill is this uh, carried interest tax reform, which kind of was what you were talking about. Th this applies to taxpayers with incomes exceeding four hundred thousand dollars a year so there's there's nothing about the irs going after the average american there Except the numbers that are that's there not, that that's that band-aid is not there that's not what the cbo has expressed has expressed and, and remember this is a huge revenue source and the way they get their revenue is how 
It's not by customer service, Glenna. It's by going after the American people. Tax this cheaters. Is all about. Going after That's tax how. cheaters. Tax cheaters. Going it's, after it tax is, cheaters. Again, it is going after. This is very simple. Look, if you think, if anybody thinks that the IRS needs more bureaucrats to audit more working class Americans, more power to you. But I'm telling you, twice, just the increase is twice the size, roughly, of the entire United States Coast Guard, for God's sake. This is not a small increase in the IRS. This is a brutal increase to go after the American people. Yeah. And they're supposed to get hundreds of billions of dollars from this increase in IRS agents. Yeah. How, where is that coming from? So coming what, from let me just ask you one, one more question to button not, this up. One more question to button this up. So if people, whoever, corporations, whoever, businesses, big or small, are, are cheating on their taxes, should they not be made to pay? Glenna, it's not corporations. Corporations are audited all the time. They have reams of lawyers. This is specifically to go after small businesses, restaurants, dry cleaners, farmers, that's where they're trying to get the money. And again, if any, there aren't that many corporations in the entire country to hire almost 90,000 new IRS agents. Logic will dictate who they're going to go after. And not only that, by this is just part of the problems with this bill. It's going to increase inflation. Even Bernie Sanders, for God's sake, has said that this is not going to help inflation. It's going to increase inflation. Okay, it's, the it's, act would very slightly increase inflation. And until 2024 and decrease inflation thereafter. That's yeah, the assessment the of the same. University of Pennsylvania Correct. Wharton budget model, which you referenced to criticize this bill. Well, no, I referenced pretty much everybody and their mama as far as criticizing <laughs> this bill. I mean, come on, this bill is as catastrophic as one can imagine. And by the way, the same people that told us that inflation was going to be transitory, the same people that have said it was only for the wealthy. Remember, high class are now the, are now the ones claiming that the IR, IRS agents are only going to go after the wealthy. All right, so Congressman, let's, let's, this is insane. Let, since you have, excuse me, since you have brought up inflation, let's talk about it a little bit. Uh, it has ticked down in the last month just a bit. It's still enormously high. It's probably about 9%. Uh, rents are sky high, uh, but gasoline has gone from $5 a gallon to less than 4 There seems to be some small but meaningful improvements here uh, in the cost of living. Would you acknowledge that? Actually, no. The American people are hurting. Uh, look, to, to celebrate when gasoline went down a dollar when it's still about twice what it was before this president uh, took office is, is just not you, Mike, Michael, but it's disingenuous, all right? The American people are struggling. We still have the highest inflation in 40 years. Gasoline prices are still ridiculously expensive. And this bill, by the way, further goes after and continues the war against domestic energy. By the way, the big beneficiary really is China because that's uh, where, and that's where all the products that we're gonna need to buy in order to satisfy this bill, it's, they're controlled by communist China. This is again. These are statements of fact. All right, so we're up. We're up against a break. We're up against it's a break. It's I just the American people. It's helping China. That's why I voted against it. It's a pretty easy bill to vote against. As we go to break, I just want to also say that in in this bill are tax credits for using American-made products. In that effort, more to come with you <laughs> if you'll stay with us. I know you will. We'll Hold on, there, <laughs> Congressman. All right, we'll be right back. Welcome back on this Sunday on This Week in South Florida. Congressman Mario Duz Ballart, a member of Congress since 2013. Uh, Congressman, uh, we want to ask you about comments that were made this week uh, on a Spanish language radio program by Lieutenant Governor Jeanette Nunez. She said that when undocumented immigrants arrive in Florida, they ought to be put on buses and sent to Delaware, the uh, president's home state. Uh, you know, this strikes a lot of people as very mean-spirited coming from, you know, a Cuban immigrant family, indeed, your family, famously, you know, came from Cuba. Um, what is your reaction to what uh, the lieutenant governor said? 
Yeah, look, I think there is uh, a lot of reason to be concerned about the violation of the rule of law that's taking place under this administration. And the folks who are determining who comes in across the southern border are the cartels, the drug cartels. And so expressing her frustration for that, uh, her support of the rule of law, I think really is frankly what the American people want. They want the United States to follow the law, to adhere to the rule of law and to the Constitution. And so uh, I think her frustration is well stated. Yeah, but, but her comment, I believe, was related specifically to undocumented immigrants coming into Florida and the great majority of those are Cuban. Of course, the Cuban Adjustment Act is still on the books, you know, and they are asking to be applied to them. Is she saying, do you think that Cubans ought to be sent to Delaware? No, I think what she's saying is that, uh, you know, the, the states that are, in particular, these uh, sanctuary states and cities around the country um, that for a long time have been, you know, saying these things without suffering the consequences of bad policies should frankly feel some of the policies, the bad policies uh, caused by this administration. We are seeing now record number of fentanyl, which, by the way, has led to record number of Americans dying in this country because of uh, uh, overdoses, most of it caused by fentanyl, most of it coming from the southern border. And so, you know, it's very nice for, you know, uh, states in the Northeast and around the country uh, controlled by, you know, liberal left-wing Democrats to want to be sanctuary states when, in fact, they don't receive any of the folks uh, that are coming over again. So should they just be totally, uh, uh, should they not feel any of the results of their statements? Or should they, by the way, share in some of the burden that other states are going through because of the broken policies of this administration? Not to mention the fact that I believe the most important thing is to adhere, adhere to the rule of law. And this administration is totally ignoring the law and the rule of law. All right, so so go with me on this for a minute. To, to your point, the and Local 10 has done so much reporting on fentanyl coming over the southern border and the crisis at the border. Um, let, let's set that aside just for this moment uh, because this week and this month, South Florida shores are seeing record numbers of migrants, so many of them coming from Cuba all of a sudden. Th that is not by all accounts, a drug issue. That is a migrant escaping mm -hmm. to the United States issue. And what the Lieutenant Governor said on the radio yesterday is that the state of Florida will be joining as policy the, what the state of Texas and Arizona uh, states are doing in this busing to other, um, to DC is what she said, or to Delaware is what she said. And I, and I guess the question is, she was she was making those comments right after a discussion on this record number of Cuban migrants coming to Florida. And it sounded as if she was recommending that these Cuban migrants be put on those buses. So so I think the question is the the status of a Cuban migrant right now is that of any other can make an asylum claim and can be paroled to do that. And as a as someone who's worked on bipartisan immigration reform, stymied at every level, what is your perspective on on busing Cuban families here looking for family and help to a state like Delaware? Great question, Glenn. I think it's important that those from wherever their country, and I think those that probably have a better potential claim for asylum of people leaving, you know, Cuba, Venezuela, Nicaragua, places like that, obviously, and they. But, but they're suffering the consequences of this broken policy as well, because the situation on the border is so bad, so broken, so out of control, that folks that have legitimate claims are not being able to have their cases heard any differently than those that are, frankly, illegitimate claims, abusive claims. So, so again, the system is so broken that those who have legitimate claims, you mentioned Cubans, Nicaraguans, Venezuelans, who should have, by the way, probably the highest po possibility of having legitimate claims, they're suffering the consequences of this broken border. Look, I don't, I don't usually quote, and you know, the, the vice president, this vice president of the United States, but she's talked a lot about root causes. The root cause of the issue that you're talking about, the number of Cubans who are now coming at sea. Well, look, this happened during the Carter administration. This happened during the Clinton administration. This happened during the Obama administration, and it's happening now. It didn't happen under the Trump administration, the Bush's administration, or the Reagan administration. You know what the root cause is? It's frankly weakness, bad policy by the president of the United States, and all of the thugs, all of the enemies of freedom, whether it's the Castro regime, the Maluto regime, the Chinese communist regime, you name it, 
They're taking advantage of a feckless president who is clueless about how to deal with these issues. And then the legislation that they bring forward helps China, hurts the American people, increases inflation, and by the way, uh, increases gasoline prices. So we shouldn't be surprised that the root cause of all of the issues that we're dealing with, including this one, is bad policies by a feckless administration and a party that controls House, Senate, and White House. And hopefully, if the American people want it so, that will change in November. Congressman Maria Duesbelart, it's always a delight to have you on our program. We enjoy the kind of the uh, uh, back and forth here with you. Respect your point of view. Thanks very much. Thank you, Congressman. Thank both of you. Okay. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Of course.